Hello out there in cyber land. I like to call it cyber land because we're coming to you this day outside the camp ministries from my brother K.C. Kennedy and the reader, my brother Stacy. And tonight, today's teachings <coughs> is a study that I've been doing over a few years and I think we'll make this in two parts. Divine names and titles. Divine names, divine redemptive names and titles of God. That's it. Divine redemptive names and titles of God. <coughs> See, <coughs> we so callously, and because it's been hidden, also in the Bible by his name. Uh, and we just casually call him Lord and God. Uh, and we use those titles. And we don't really understand the meanings of the words. Because he has many names and he has many titles. And each name, a name in the Hebrew, they, the names weren't just to carry out counseling as they are today. Well, I'm going to call you Shawawa. Uh, that's a name name. They have no name, there's no meaning to the name. You know, we got our master's name. I, my name is, my last name is Kinley. I don't know what that means. Yeah. You know, some names just don't have any meanings to it. It's just because it was handed down to you. Yeah. But the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, the names, were, names meant something. Uh, and so they had a meaning behind them because, and then it, it showed part of the, 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 the characteristics of the person. And especially when you deal with, 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 the, with the Most High, these names show you his, 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 his divine characteristics and purposes in calling him that name. And we're going to start off in Genesis 1 1. And. Uh, <clears throat> Go there because this name in Genesis 1 1. Go ahead and read the book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, sir. Right there. That word God there is Elohim. It occurs over 2,700 times in, in the Old Testament. And it, and it, it is it is dealing the, with the Creator. That's why it says Elohim created the heavens and the earth. It's a relationship. That name is used in relationship to what the Creator has created to, to the creatures that he has created. And Elohim, the creator, that's what that word God, that usage of it in the Hebrew is Halloween, Elohim. And I want to read something to you that I wrote down here. Uh, let me get here. Because that's the first occurrence of the word and it connects it with the creation. And it gives it essential meaning as the creator. It indicates his relation to mankind as his creature. Because God knew all mankind, but God didn't have a covenant with all mankind. So this Elohim is in relation to what he has created. All mankind. Whether you call yourself a Buddhist, Muslim, or what else? <clears throat> you got to deal with this creator here. Now you may not be part of his covenant, but he is the one, this is why that name as the creator, Elohim. Where it's it, it's in the case of relation to mankind as his creatures, where it stands in contrast with Jehovah as Indicating covenant relationships. 
See, Jehovah, we're going to look at that name, uh, or Yahovah, or Yahweh, it deals with covenant relationships. Elohim is God the Son, the living word, with creature form to create. Look at John chapter 1. Yeah, see, because Elohim was plural. It's the Father and the Son. It, it, it's, it's plural. It's a plural word for God. God's. But you only have one God you haven't dealt with, and that was Elohim, the living word. Not the Father. Go ahead and read. John 1 1. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes, sir. Now, that's the living Word. See? It was with God. That's your Elohim there. Now, I want to show you another passage in 2 Chronicles 18 31, where Elohim and Jehovah or Yahweh or Jehovah, we're going to say the Lord is in the Hebrew, is Jehovah or Jehovah, Yahweh. Both is one essence, and we're going to break it down for you. Chapter 18 of 2 Chronicles, verse 31. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 18. Beginning at verse 31. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. Yeah. So when these when the Syrian kings was coming coming to him, Jehoshaphat, who was king of uh, of Israel. He cried out, and the Lord Jehovah helped him. Because that's the relationship he had with Israel under the covenant. And it says, helped him, and God moved them to depart from and, El and Elohim moved Syria to depart from Je Jehoshaphat. As a creator in relationship to what he has created, to mankind. But he had no covenant relationship with Syria. You see that? You understand that? Because he, he didn't say the Lord moved him. It, it, it was it's God, Elohim. The creator moved them. Because the people of God. To, for God to deal you in a relationship, you got to come under the covenant. Then he becomes Jehovah or uh, Yahweh to you. But if not, he's going to deal with you as, a, as all mankind. <clears throat> See, so there's a lot of meaning, meaning to this. And so he not only uh, was God the son of the living word, when he was, in, when he was God, but when, he, but when he came and took on the likeness of men, he came in the form man to redeem. But let's look at Colossians 15, 17, before we look at that redemption again. Well, go back to John 1, verse, verse 14, and then we're going to look at those Colossians, that Colossians verse. Verse 14. Yeah, John 1:14. So Elohim, God. Elohim is the living word. He's the creator. That's the first occurrence of the usage. The first time it was ever used. Verse 14. The gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, 
father, full of grace and truth. That when he, when he came to Mary, the father, to redeem mankind, because he had to become man, he couldn't redeem him as God, because man is the one who sinned, man has been redeemed by man. <coughs> he had power. Look at verse 12 and read. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And it came in the name of the Father, Yahshua, Jesus. Yah saves. Yah, God, Yah is your salvation. Jehovah is your salvation. Jehovah became your salvation. Yahovah has become your salvation in Yahshua. The same, the same God, but in a different person and a different title. But it was not God when he came through Mary. He was man. We talked about that last week. Look at uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God? the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Uh -huh. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Yes, sir. That's the living word. He was the creator. See? The verse 14 says, whom we have redemption through his blood. But when he came in the flesh, he was able to redeem man when he, was in this, when, he, when he was God. He was able to create man. He was Elohim. Look at Revelation chapter 3. The book of Revelation chapter 3. Verse, in that verse 14. Uh -huh. Go ahead. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block, block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Whoa. I must have wrote something wrong down here. Hold on, hold on. Is that Revelation 3.14? Uh, no, I was reading out of 2.14. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. right. Revelations. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, these things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Right. That was Yahshua, Jesus. Tell him. But he was the beginning of the creation of, of God. Uh, that was him, people. Uh, so that was his title. He got different titles, different things, and they mean something. Like you go to, you go to, uh, I heard people go to uh, AAA and they pray to the Creator. Well, yes, it's a good thing, but if you know His name, it's even better. See, he, He's not just this haphazard, no name uh, entity. His name is with power. See, all his things, it, it shows his greatness and his power, his omniscience, his, 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 his glory, man. Uh, I'm afraid of poppy, my poppy. Hey, we get so, try to get so intimate uh, uh, with our God that we, that we dishonor our God, our Elohim. So, <clears throat> Number two, let's look at Jehovah. I want, I want to look at the name Jehovah. Because Jehovah is, 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 is in the covenant relationship. I want to turn to Genesis chapter 21. Elohim is God as the creator of all things. Jehovah or Yahweh is the same God in a co covenant relationship to those he created. Jehovah means the eternal, the immutable one. He was and is, and he who was, and he who is, and he who is to come. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, beginning at verse 33. 
Hold on one minute. Let me get there. Go ahead and read. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Right. The Lord, that word is Jehovah, Yahweh, or Yahshua, not Yahshua, Jehovah. Well, Y-A, because there was no J in the, in the original text in English. But the everlasting God, who was, who is, and who is to come. Jesus Christ, Yahshua Messiah, the same yesterday, today, and what? Tomorrow. In relationship to who he's created. But in relation to the people of the covenant. That's why it is so devilish to call yourself a New Testament Christian and don't understand that it's the new covenant that you have to come up under in order to have a relationship. You may have a relationship to Elohim. Because he got that all mankind. But if you're going to call on the name of Yahshua, who was Jehovah, you got to come under that covenant. You can call on Jesus all day long and not take care of the, not be partakers of the covenant then you ain't going to be part of his relationship with his covenant people. That's why this other Jesus out here it says, just come as you are. See, all the other gods of all the other nations, they had no covenant people. That's right. You can have all the gods you wanted. Didn't have to be favored of one. Because all of them was whole and adulterous. That's, right. That's why he calls us a nation of adulterers and adulteresses. That's right. We serve so many different gods. We call on every other God's name. We name them. We name Baal. We name Buddha. How come they all got names, but our God don't have no name? You know, I don't know. Temple trying to find the Lord. The Lord. The name. The Lord, the Lord is translated from Jehovah. I don't know how they got the Lord, because they try to hide his name. But oh, well, that's the Lord. Hey, there's many lords. There's many gods. People. First Corinthians chapter eight. Which one are you speaking about? Now you can use the name Jesus. I ain't got no problem with that. If I had a problem with it, it made no difference. But I don't think God has a problem with it as long as you're dealing with the covenant. Because then you're distinguishing yourself out from that other Jesus that ain't got no covenant. If you're keeping the covenant of God, I ain't talking about because a covenant is agreement between two parties. And it's to keep his statutes, his laws, and his feast days. And his commandments. You gotta come under that covenant. And then you have a covenant relationship with Jehovah. So you can pray. You can't never pray to uh, I gotta write this thing down. Yahweh the everlasting God. We can say my God, but not my Jehovah. For Yahweh or Jehovah is my God. You understand? But Elohim, our God is Jehovah, who is our God, who is our creator. Now, Jehovah, a Yahweh, uh, has ten titles, or redemptive names, I like to call them. And we're going to take a look at them. Turn to Genesis 22, verse 14. The book of Genesis, chapter 22, beginning at verse 14. And, it, and this first one is, Jehovah, Yorah. Y-I-R-E-H. Jehovah, Y-A-H-O-B-A-H. Or Jehovah, Jorah. And it'll be in the book. Jehovah with a J and Jorah with a J. And it means Jehovah will see or provide. That's Jehovah Jirah or Jehovah Jirah. That Jehovah will see and will provide. Verse 14 and read. 
And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now, what happened starts when Abraham went to sacrifice his son. And God said, Lay not thy hand upon the land, for now I know that thou fearest him, seeing thou hast not withhold thy son, thy only son. Now, he called Isaac his only son. Well, what happened to Ishmael? Ishmael wasn't part of that covenant. That's right. And Isaac shall I see be called. Mm -hmm. He didn't recognize Ishmael as, as Jehovah in relationship to, to Ishmael because Ishmael wasn't part of that covenant relationship that he had with Isaac and Abraham. And with Israel, the nation that he had to go make later on through Jacob. So, that's why he called Isaac his only son. Go ahead and read that last verse, 13. 13 or 14? 13. Okay, verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, and be, behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Right, because Jehovah, Uriah, Jehovah, Uriah, Jehovah, 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 he saw it. And he provided, he provided the lamb, people. That's what that word meant. And it was a type. Just like he provided himself as the redemptive, as the Lamb of God, people. He saw the need and he provided. That's why we said, Behold, he comes, John the Baptist says, Jesus, Yahshua, the, the, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. That's what that name means. Jehovah Yorah, Jehovah who will see or provide. Oh, my name. Jehovah, Yorah, you see my position. You see my need. You see my what's up ahead of me. You know of all things. And I know that you will provide a way for me. Oh, great Jehovah, Yorah, in the name of Yahshua, my Savior. You see what I'm saying? Then you can use that name effectively, people. Not that he won't answer it any other way. I'm just saying, just the head to bed. I, there's power in the name. It, it lets you know there's power there. Your, your faith just increases and grows. Because your understanding does. Number two is your whole world. Rofeka, R O P H E K A. It means Jehovah that healeth thee. Exodus 15, verse 26. The book of Exodus, chapter 15, beginning with verse 36. No, 26. 26. What you write down? Is that what you write down? No, I just need to listen to you as a minister. Did you hear me say no, 36? <laughs> well, I thought I heard it. Yeah. 15, 26. Go ahead. And say, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes, sir. I am Jehovah Rophekah in the Hebrew. Rophekah, I guess that's how you pronounce it. <clears throat> it's one of his titles. See? I am Jehovah Rebecca, who healed thee. See? Oh, Jehovah Rebecca, I have pains in my body and healed, and you promised that you would let none of these diseases come upon me if I kept your commandment. And I'm asking you in the mighty name of Yahshua, my, my Savior, the anointed one, to heal me. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. He said, ask the Father. 
in my name, in the name of the Father. See? So, number three, Jehovah Nissa, which means Jehovah is my banner. Jehovah is my banner. Exodus 17, 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 15. Go ahead. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. Right. See, go ahead and read the next verse. Verse 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Am 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 Amalek from the generation to generation. Yeah. See, you ever seen, he was in banner. The word banner is, is a canopy. And and he's like, he'll be your canopy when he went, when he went to battle. The Lord will be our canopy, will be our banner. It's, and, and it was like carrying his name around. You, you know, and, and you never seen how those, they would they have these banners before them, the armies. You know, and, uh, uh, and, and don't let the banner fall off. See, it represents his power and his name with him. The Lord will be our battle when we go to battle. What is that word? Jehovah Nissai. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Number four. Here's, here's one that's kind of hard to pronounce. But the word but Nissai is N-I-S-S-I. -S 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 but you can look up these words in a concordance. In a, in a concordance. Uh, we're going to go to Exodus 31, 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 13. This is the word Jehovah Makadaskim. Makadaskim, which is M C K A D D I S H and K E M. Makadaskim. It means the Lord that sanctifies you, or Jehovah that sanctifies you. That sets you apart as he is. See? In relationship. See? And not as the creator to mankind, because the creator has not set, set apart all mankind as he is. You know all mankind don't, don't serve the one true God. But all mankind gonna serve the Creator one way or another for good or evil, because He's the one who is sovereign. Now they may, well, they may not serve Him in righteousness, and that's gonna be the problem. That's gonna be the problem. He never came under that redemptive relationship. And, and said, all that you have said, I won't do and be obedient to. Have you never been taught the covenant? And you cast the law, we cast the law behind our back, and we said we had no need of it. But all the time you cast it, we're casting God in relationship. How are you going to relay us through, through the covenant, through the agreement to be his people, and he agreed to be your God. The other guys don't have no covenant. That's why you can go in. That's why you can go from church to church, denomination to denomination. You can be a Baptist today. You can be a Buddhist tomorrow. You can be a Methodist. You know, but if you're under the covenant, you are a believer in the one true God that you walk away from the whole thing. Well, what, which one are we doing now? Uh, oh yeah, Exodus 31, 13. Yes. Read it, brother. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you. Yeah. What did else say? Anything else in that verse? Throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Yeah. See? Jehovah that sanctifies you. Ain't the sign of a, a holy day? Yes. What did he begin in creation? Didn't he sanctify and set apart as holy? That's how you know you're serving the Lord 
that sanctify you, you. Through the through the statutes and the laws, we set you apart. That's your whole uh, mechanism. Look at Leviticus 20, verse 8. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, beginning at verse 8. Go ahead and read. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctify you. Yes, sir. Leviticus 21, verse 8. That word the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is Jehovah now. Or Yahweh, or Yahovah. They got the Lord. It caused problems, but that's how I've been reading them. And you know, if it was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for us. Paul didn't speak no English. Moses didn't speak English either. Mm -hmm. So we gotta sometimes think about what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And think about what we say and then think about how we're rationalizing things in our mind. Because we can we can rationalize tradition so much what's been so common to us and throw about throw out truth to keep the tradition. 21 verse 8. Read. 21 or 28. I read 28 already. Okay. So we had 21. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 8. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offered the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee. For I, the Lord, will sanctify you, am holy. Yes, sir. He said apart from all the other gods. So if he said apart from all the other gods, we got to be too. But it's only through him. Through keeping the covenant, people. The only way you can set your part and yourself apart from other gods is that you have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. That's a, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Those things is what sanctifies you. You it's not Sunday that keeps you holy. It's the Sabbath day that sanctifies you, that sets you apart. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 12. Verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which, which if a man do, he should even live in them. And this, this, living is, this, this, this word live here is dealing with eternal life. Go ahead. More. Also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. When did he get the Sabbath, people? Back to the beginning. Remember, we, 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 we're dealing with the Creator in relationship with Jehovah, my God, my Creator. See? Now, look at Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. I love it, man. I got it. See, if you have a love for the truth, it won't be hard for you to take this. But if you want to, your pride will stop you because you're already full of it, you know, your knowledge. I had to empty myself up myself before I could receive this because I, I taught there was no law. Uh, you know, I was a New Testament Christian. Yeah, I mean, you come trying to bring some law before me, the commandment before me. I, I shoot you up. Thought I would. But I didn't know I was just fighting against my God, but I didn't know no better. Because all you get, you gotta get understanding. Read Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28, brother. The book. Mark according to the gospel. Chapter 2, begin at verse 27. Read. And he said unto them, 
The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Uh huh. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Huh? He was always always Lord of the Sabbath, wasn't he? He didn't want to the one that sanctified you on the Sabbath. That's the sign of you. I hear him. He's your God, people. If he's the Lord of the Sabbath, then and he was I am I am Jehovah who sanctified you, and it's a sign between me and you. Then what a Sunday. Ask yourself, whose sign is that? It didn't come out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Anything else came out of Satan's mouth. Satan, let me say something about Satan. He's lit. He don't come up with nothing new. If you, if you ever get this, let this revelation sink into you. He just corrupts what God has already given him. He just corrupted the Sabbath day. He said it was Sunday, that's all. So who Lord are you? Who you serve? That's who God you are. That's who God who you serve. So, Jehovah, number five. Jehovah Shalom, which means Jehovah or Yahweh who sins or gives peace. Judges chapter 6, verse 24. The book of Judges, chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. Go ahead and read. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Until this day, it is yet an Oprah of the Abyssalites. Right. Start at verse, actually, start at verse uh, uh, 23 and read it. Read, 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 read verse 23 also. Verse 23, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Oprah of the Abyssal. Right. right. Jehovah sins or gives peace. The man can have peace of mind. See? He said, you will not die this day. See? Look at John chapter 14. The book of John, chapter 14. Verse 27. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give it out unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Right. That is the same one who was Jehovah Shalom, who came as the living word, came in the form of a man, became flesh, but still was the one who could give peace. Because he, the father was working him. The father was, was look, look at Second Corinthians chapter. Let me read this to you. Second Corinthians chapter five. It might be First Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Nineteen, the book of Second Corinthians, chapter five, beginning at verse nineteen. Go ahead. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of the word of reconciliation. Yeah, He was in Christ, the Messiah. See, that's why He could give that peace, even though He was in the form of a of the flesh. The, the, the God was in him still reconciling the world unto himself. He, look at Romans chapter 5. So he was able to give that same peace. 
You want to make him a divine man. He wasn't no divine man. You can't, God don't die people. That's right. God don't bleed people. Flesh and blood is what bleeds. Romans 5, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Go ahead. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He was Jehovah Shalom, who sends peace, brought peace, and, and will bring back peace on the earth when he comes back. When the whole earth being rest. This was part one of divine names and titles, redemptive names and titles of God.